Welcome to the Campus Jack Start Session on the TouchMix 30 Pro by QSC. I created this session to provide a unified place to start for all the engineers mixing at Campus Jacks. This helps provide more continuity in the quality of the sound we produce, no matter who is mixing. In addition, if we're all using basically the same inputs at the Snake, this will cut down significantly on our setup and teardown time. So here are the features of the Campus Jack Start Session. Input layer 1 through 8 is our drum bank. Input layer 9 through 16 is our rhythm instruments bank, including bass, acoustic guitars, electric guitars, and stereo keys. Input layer 17 through 24 starts out with four blank channels that you can make whatever you need them to be. And then we have our vocals. Over here in DCA land, we have our instruments grouped on their appropriate fader. These inputs and in DCAs can obviously be arranged in any configuration you need them to be. Take a look at DCA number seven. I've included our stage wedges here. This is what I call the panic fader. If an unexperienced vocalist is, say, pointing their mic directly into the monitor or choking up on their mic, making everything sail into feedback land, and you're just not quite sure where it's coming from yet, you can pull the wedges DCA down until you gain control of the situation. Take a look at DCA number eight. If you need to adjust the overall volume of your house, you would use this fader, which includes the left-right master, the subs, and the front fill. The main master only adjusts your left-right main outs. If you pulled down the main mix all the way, you'd still be left with noise from the subs and front fills. So DCA8 is your overall house volume, not the main fader. Taking a look at our effects master's bank, I've included a vocal plate reverb with about a two second decay on effects one. Effects bus two is a mono delay. User button five on your touch mix is your tap for delay. This user button is an easy one to identify because hey, it's blinking at you just waiting for you to tap in a new delay time. Effects bus three is an instrumental plate reverb with a one second decay time. This works well on your snare. A little on the acoustic guitar is nice, and it makes your horn section sound awesome. The four vocal channels on inputs 21 through 24 are the only inputs where I've added effects from the vocal reverb bus. Use your ear when adding effects to your other inputs. Now taking a look at our outputs on the left margin. Auxes one through six correspond to monitor wedges one through six five of which are on stage. The sixth wedge is in the storage room should you need to pull it out. On stage, monitors one through four are in consecutive order from left to right, with the fifth being the drum monitor. I rung them out with a graphic EQ and applied high pass and low pass filters. Again, this is just a starting point, and you'll find adjustments that will need to be made based on the artist's preferences and various other nuances in the mix. Aux 7 is the center fill, which only has vocals assigned to it along with the vocal reverb and delay. The front fill was added to bring more vocal definition to the mix, where the left-right main outs weren't quite covering the space well enough. If you decide to use those vocal channels for something other than vocals, don't forget to take them out of the front fill. Aux 10 is our subs. Really, the only channels you'll add the subs to will be your kick drum, perhaps the floor tom, bass guitar, and any tracks that the band might be playing with that includes drums and bass. In our start session, nothing is added to the subs yet. You'll determine how much of the subs you'll want in those specific channels at soundcheck based on the genre of the music. Auxiliary 13 and 14 is our stereo broadcast mix. This is used for our live stream. This mix is fed to an audio interface and then plugged into whoever's phone we'll be using for the live stream that night. This mix is cued in our start session. After you've dialed in your house mix, use your headphones to set a broadcast mix to the best of your ability, keeping in mind that you'll need to make significant adjustments to the drums, bass, and electric guitar channels 
since this mix is in post fader, and you won't be blasting these inputs through the house master since their stage volume is already loud. One other note here, you'll need to turn up the effects master in the broadcast to add the live feel to the mix. Your broadcast mix should not sound dry. It should sound like you're standing in the middle of the room. In your broadcast mix, take advantage of your panning. If your electric guitar is on the right side of the stage, pan it to the right. If a sax is on the left, pan it to the left. Kick, snare, bass, and the lead vocals should always remain at the center. Stereo keys should be panned hard left right. Mono keys can be panned according to where they're standing on the stage. These little broadcast tips will add a ton of definition to your overall live stream mix. There's an audience mic hanging in the ceiling. If you have a spare channel, plug that in and use it to capture the live ambience from the room. Here's a very important note about that. Be sure to unassign it from the main mix or you'll run into feedback land. While the band is playing, I generally don't have the audience mic too hot in the mix. When they finish the song and everyone starts clapping and making noise, I push that fader up to capture the energy in the room. I then bring it back down when the band starts playing again. I've assigned and labeled the user buttons. Clear clip is for all those OCD people who can't stand to look at the red clip indicators. Clear cue will clear anything you've got cued in the session. Mute break will mute channels 1 through 20. I left the vocal channels open so we don't miss anything when the band is getting back up on stage. Remember our all house volume on DCA 8? When you press this button marked LR plus subs plus FF, which stands for front fill, it brings up the DCAs with DCA 8 highlighted so you can quickly make a house volume adjustment. User 5 is our tap tempo as we discussed earlier. User 6 is the Campus Jack Start Session Scene. When you press this one, the Start Session Scene opens up. Yeah, be careful you don't touch this one while the band is playing. <laughs> At the end of the night, before you shut down, press the Campus Jack's Start Session button so the board is ready for the next engineer. When you start your night, immediately save as to a new scene position in the mixer and then have at it. One quick note, please don't save changes to this session. Well, that's all, folks. Let's go make all these bands sound amazing and make Campus Jacks the most sought-after club in the world. Oh,